Lecture 9 of Renal System Renal Calcium Excretion Normally, 99 of the filtered calcium will reabsorb by the tubule as the percentage divided as 65 percentage will reabsorb by the proximal tubule 25 up to 30 percentage re is reabsorbed by the loop of Henle and uh, about 4 to 9 percentage reabsorbed by the distal and collecting tubule the remaining 1 percentage is excreted in the urine calcium excretion adatan is adjusted to the meat of the body needs what are the factors that affect the renal calcium excretion? First of all, parathyroid hormone. When there is an increase in the parathyroid hormone, this leads to an increased calcium reabsorption and decreased urinary excretion of the calcium and vice versa. Secondly, when there is extracellular volume expansion or an increased arterial pressure, this leads to the decreased proximal tubule calcium reabsorption and an increased uh, 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 calcium excretion by the urine and vice versa. A factor al-akhar huwa when there is an increase in the plasma phosphate concentration, it leads to stimulate secretion of the parathyroid hormone, and the parathyroid uh, hormone will lead to an increased uh, calcium reabsorption and decrease urinary calcium excretion, and vice versa. The uh, factor al -akhar huwa metabolic acidosis will increase the calcium reabsorption, and the metabolic alkalosis will decrease or inhibit calcium reabsorption. In the renal phosphate excretion, Adatan, the renal tubules have a normal transport maximum for reabsorption for phosphate, which is about 0.1 millimolar per minute. This transport maximum will increase, يعني, uh, uh, level uh, uh, is, uh, is increase when there is a low phosphate diet over the time. And this leads to the reduced phosphate, uh, phosphate in, uh, excretion in the urine and uh, uh, an increased uh, phosphate reabsorption. An increased plasma parathyroid hormone lead to decreased tubular phosphate reabsorption and more phosphate excretion. Control of the renal magnesium excretion and the extracellular magnesium ion concentration. The total plasma magnesium concentration is about 1.8 milli equivalent per liter. Uh, the free ionized concentration of magnesium is about 0.8 milli equivalent per liter. The filtered magnesium is reabsorbed. About 25% of it will be reabsorbed by the proximal tubule, 65% by, uh, will reabsorb by the loop of Henle, and less than 5% will reabsorb by the distal and collecting tubules. The kidneys normally excrete about 10 to 15 percentage of the glomerular filtrate of the magnesium. This amount will modif modified depending on the magnesium excess or depletion. So, magnesium excretion is increased during the following uh, disturbance cases. As first in the increased extracellular fluid magnesium concentration secondly when there is a, a extracellular volume expansion and finally when there is an increased extracellular fluid calcium uh, concentration the integration of the renal mechanism to control of the extracellular fluid volume ما هي الميكانيزم اللي راح تتعاون فيما بينها in order to control extracellular fluid volume uh, عادةً the extracellular fluid volume uh, maintained normally uh, due to the balance between the intake and output of the water and salt due to the intrarenal compensation لوجود عملية glomerular tubular balance و tubular glomerular feedback اللي حكينا عنهم اللي هي intrarenal uh, mechanisms uh, uh, لوجودهم راح يظل uh, normally الاكسترا سيلولار فلويد فوليوم كنترولد ان نورمال فوليوم بات وين ذير از انترا رينال كومبنسيشن ميكانيزم اكزوشن ان كيس اوف ديزيز ذيس ليد تو ذا سيستميك انذر سيستميك ميكانيزم ويل اوبريت توجذر to control the sodium and water balance and so control the extracellular fluid volume and maintain homeostasis which are 
as follow هذه السيستميك ميكانيزم اللي راح احكي عنها هي انتم تعرفوها ولكن مجرد اعادة ترتيب افكاركم حتى تعرفون شلون هذه الميكانيزم تساعدنا تو كنترول اكسترا سيريولار فلويد فوليوم First of all, changes in the in the blood pressure uh, as increase in uh, in the blood volume lead to uh, increase the pressure lead to the pressure natural releases. This mechanism is enhanced. Secondly, changes in the circulating hormones, for example, renin and angiotensin system enhanced as well, uh, aldosterone, antiallergic hormones, and arterial natriuretic peptide. All of these hormones will. Uh, participate in controlling uh, 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 extracellular, uh, extracellular fluid volume back to normal uh, and uh, thirdly alteration of the sympathetic nervous system activity uh, uh, for example eating a, a meal containing large amount of the salt and water uh, this lead to the inhibition of the renal sympathetic activity and lead to the rapid elimination of the excess fluid in the circulation uh, okay what is the integrated responses to the changes in the sodium intake normally the kidney adatan match the salt and water excretion to the salt and water intakes in the range uh, uh, from as uh, low as uh, one tenth of the normal to high as uh, ten times normal uh, added uh, uh, sodium intake when the when when the sodium intake is increased, the sodium output initially delay slightly behind the intake. This delay lead to the slight increase in the extracellular fluid volume and small increases in the arterial pressure. This increases in the extracellular fluid volume and uh, uh, slight increase in the arterial pressure lead to cause. Uh, various mechanism in the body to increase uh, uh, sodium excretion. What is this? This mechanism as first of all activation of low pressure receptor reflexes that originate from the stretch receptor of the right atrium and also in the pulmonary blood vessels. This will give us signals to the brain stem leading to inhibit sympathetic nerve activity to the kidney leading to decrease tubular sodium reabsorption and increase the uh, urine excretion of the sodium this mechanism is most important added in the first few hours or perhaps the first day after a large increase in the salt and water intake second mechanism here the pressure nitrosis either when you see an increase of the blood pressure it lead to the pressure nitrosis third there is will be suppression of the angiotensin 2 formation which in turn lead to decrease aldosterone secretion both will lead to reduce tubular sodium reabsorption Rabi and stimulation of the nitrouretic system which is especially arterial nitrouretic peptide the opposite changes will take place when the sodium intake is reduced below normal below normal level. Now we will talk about the physiological anatomy of the bladder. The urinary bladder is a smooth muscle chamber. It's composed of two main parts, the body, which is the major part of the bladder in which the urine collects, and the neck, which is the funnel shape extension of the body passing inferiorly and interiorly into the urogenital triangle and connecting with the urethra. This is the picture of the urinary, uh, urinary bladder. This is the body. Okay, uh, it consists of a smooth muscle, and we will talk about the, uh, the muscle name and uh, composition uh, later. And this is the uh, bladder neck, which is uh, funnel shape called posterior urethra is connected to the urethra and here it, uh, the urogenital triangle diaphragm will be and that is the ureter it will enter obliquely into the bladder 
مثل ما قلت قبل شوي the lower part of the bladder neck is also called posterior urethra because its relation to the urethra the smooth muscle of the bladder is called the dressal muscle its muscle fiber extend in all direction هذا extension of the its muscle fiber to the all direction هذا مهم ليش؟ لأنه when it's contracted it lead to increase the pressure in the bladder to the 40 up to 60 millimeter mercury thus the contraction of the detrusal muscle is a major step in emptying uh, in emptying the, the bladder smooth muscle cells of the detrusal muscles the smooth muscle cells of the detrusal muscle will fuse with one and another so therefore the action potential will separate throughout the detrusal muscle from one one muscle cell to the next one to cause entire bladder contraction at once on the posterior wall of the bladder lying immediately above the bladder neck is a small triangular area which called trigon at the lowermost apex of the trigon the bladder neck open into the posterior urethra and the two ureters enter the bladder at the uppermost angle of the trigon the trigon mu mucosa is smooth in contrast to the remaining bladder mucosa which is folded to form rugi. The ureters enter the bladder courses obliquely through the detrusal muscle and then they will pass another 1 to 2 cm beneath the bladder mucosa before they emptying into the bladder. The bladder neck which is called posterior urethra it is about 2 to 3 cm long and its wall composed of the detrusal muscle interlaced with the large amount of the elastic tissue. The muscle in this area called internal sphincter. <coughs> internal sphincter. At the posterior wall of the bladder, there is a triangular area which is called the trigon. It is above, uh, above the bladder neck. The lower uh, apex of it is uh, open to the posterior urethra. The uppermost uh, angles uh, at which the ureter will open there, both ureter will open there, this ureter and this ureter. The ureter will pass obliquely through the trissal muscle, then one to two centim under the mucosa, then will open at the uppermost angles of the trigon. The trigon have a smooth uh, mucosa which is differentiated from the uh, uh, other uh, all bladder mucosa which is uh, folded and called rugi okay the normal tone normally keep the bladder neck and posterior urethra empty of the urine and prevent emptying of the bladder until the pressure in the main part of the bladder will rise above the critical threshold. Beyond the posterior urethra, the urethra will pass through the urogenital diaphragm, which contain a layer of voluntary uh, skeletal muscle, which called external sphincter of the bladder. The external sphincter muscle is under voluntary control of the nervous system and can be used consciously prevent urination even when the involuntary control or are attempting to empty the bladder as we will talk and explain in the next lecture inshallah thank you